It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's superhero slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we are getting into that holiday spirit, Mike, with our holiday spirits. We're drinking, no, I'm kidding, we're not drinking on the show. I kind of wish we were sometimes, but not today. Uh, with the first, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Reviews. We're going to talk about this. Yeah, you know, we'll talk about some synergy there. Holiday spirit and a Zack Snyder movie. It, exactly. Yeah. And honestly, I wish, uh, this is one of the times I wish we were, uh, we got early reviews to watch this, because I would love to watch this early and talk <laughs> about it on the show. But we'll, we'll get into this later in the episode. Echo drops a very violent trailer right before mm -hmm. uh, the the show, and we're going to talk about I what have, that means. I have theories. I have theories. There here. are so many theories here. He's only got five episodes to, to theorize on this <laughs> time, guys. So we'll be fine. Marvel has some new animation series for 2024. We're going to talk about a new announced one and some other uh, now scheduled ones. So mm -hmm. we'll give you that uh, rundown and more on today's episode. Yeah, but but Chris, you were telling me you have a. You have like a, a top of the show uh, announcement here. Yes, so we are taking a uh, it's the holiday season. Uh, everyone knows next next Sunday is Christmas Eve, so we will be taking it off uh, to do that. So hopefully everyone has a happy holidays and and a merry Christmas. And I'll I'll leave you with this message. Oh oh man! And guess what? You've oh. all been whammed. You've all got whammed on today's uh, so episode this is, of Superhero Slate. You've been whammed. This is this is brand new to me. Uh, Mike didn't know is, about this. <laughs> Chris is like <laughs> the funny the, the funniest part about this is just you uh, preambling yeah. it to me before we hit record. You're yeah. like, uh, just to let you know, uh, Mike, I'm gonna wham everybody. I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> yeah. well, wait, what? It's just like I I got a wham uh, queued up on my phone. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> Please elaborate. She's like, yeah. he's like, it's a thing. I was like, oh, it's like Rick rolling. He's like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you don't know about getting whammed. I was like, no, I don't. Yeah. But I'm, I welcome you. Now he wants to get whammed. He wants to get whammed so hard, and he did. Yeah. So uh, it sounds like so the the goal is you you want to see how long you can go without hearing yeah. the song. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And and I want to let everyone know I heard mine in November, so I my entire year was ruined. Uh, very, very early on. Uh, it's it's the, fine though. I, this song doesn't offend me. I think it's funny. So it's to me, it's just just a hilarious the, kind of thing. The second best part was you going. I can play eight seconds of it. I looked it up. Yeah. We can't get swarmed by the record labels if we only do eight seconds. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, also, a couple other things. If anyone gets anything cool this holiday season, do let us know. Share it with us. We want to know what you get. I'm I'm excited to know if anyone happens to get that Avengers Lego tower that I didn't buy. Oh my uh, god, I saw it in I saw it in person. Oh, we were at the Lego so beautiful, store isn't it? It's... Last weekend, I'm like, oh man, it's sick. And my advent calendar this year is that Marvel Lego like mm -hmm. holiday advent calendar. They'd be so, so good keep... to put them on the tower. Wouldn't yeah, they? like I keep opening them, and I'm like, ah, like there's a part of me that wants it. Also, a part of me like, well, where do I put it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yep. I like, I, like, I'm a Lego person. Like, I've this is one thing that I've found out. Um, uh, traditionally, I've not been somebody that's received very large or grandiose Lego sets until somewhat recently in my life, and they're almost they're almost kind of exhausting. Like, yep. uh, if if you can't put it together in like one day, I think it's almost a little bit too much for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm always a person that likes to disassemble my Lego projects and put them back in with my collection because I like to, you know, build whatever I want with like my, my component parts. So like I look at it, I'm like, oh wow, this is awesome. Okay, I have to take it all apart eventually. So I'm not here like building like statues and mausoleums. So I, I that's would, the anxiety yeah. that at least I'm saving myself of yeah. uh, detaching all the pieces you've, later on. You've talked yourself out of it. That that's the important. I I, I don't I wanted to display it because it's one of those ones like. I don't want to put it up against the wall because there's obviously things on both sides of this, right? That you want to mm -hmm. display. So how do you get this in something like, I was thinking like, well, do I get like a motorized lazy Susan that lives on in mm. a glass case kind of deal? Cause my wife has the, the Disney castle and I'm like, you know, we have it against the wall on the shelf. I'm like, this is cool, but the backside's even cooler. Cause you can see into the castle, right? It's not like it's a, a one sided thing. So I was like, how do we how do we make both of these work? So I've talked myself out of it for the meantime, but um, yeah. When you when you see it in person, it's just like, oh, there's a lot of these like you know, translucent glass mm -hmm. pieces 
that you didn't expect. So I was like, well, how much just am I buying clear Legos? It seems to be a lot of clear, but the minifigs are the coolest part. And yeah. get that Kevin Feige not, figure. Yeah, I try not to look at the front of my advent calendar box because it's almost kind of like full of spoilers yeah. uh, of the Legos that I'm getting out. But like three days ago, I opened up a jetpack. And I don't know who it's supposed to go on because with these Lego advent calendars, sometimes they give you extra pieces that, you know, make more sense when you get a couple more days uh, down the line. I don't know who this jetpack is supposed to belong to. So I have it on. um, uh, I don't know what Wakanda character it is. I don't know if it's like Nakia or, you know, somebody else. But uh, (laughs) she was unpacked with like hockey playing ice hockey so i don't know if that's the national sport of wakanda and they're telling us through lego but i was like she could use a jetpack so right now she's sporting it that's so, the beauty of legos uh, you can just put the jetpack <laughs> on anybody you want to at this point uh, play yeah so we'll, not. yeah i got a couple more days of mm-hmm. that that set hopefully yeah. i find out where that jetpack goes yeah very very excited um to to kind of get some of that stuff uh and kind of kind of you know hol- i love holidays and you never know what you're going to get and you know I, I buy myself usually anything i want so to get something from somebody else i'm like oh this is i, I didn't have this so that's pretty fun and then also anyone who's got the favorite meals like you know again we're, we're we're big foodies over here if you've got food things that you like to eat during the holidays i'm What's a big your, deviled what? egg kick right now mike a okay big deviled egg kick. Ob- obviously deviled egg reign supreme uh yeah. the second half of the year but what is your what is your preferred like christmas like sweet treat i don't want to mm-hmm. necessarily lock you down to a cookie choice but a cookie choice is definitely expected um well you know me i don't eat chocolate chocolate is not my thing so so it it puts me in a different kind of um i guess uh area for the for this mm -hmm. i really enjoy a white chocolate dipped uh, pretzel rod like with with, like stuff sprinkled yeah um Uh it's it's kind of out there it's a little different i really enjoy that my father-in-law makes this it's i it's not puppy chow, but it's got like Cheerios and rice, uh, Chex Mix and pretzels, and it's got like a white chocolate mix. Yeah, kind of into it. no, um, my my wife's family makes that uh, during the holidays, and it definitely seems like one of those dishes that has a different name depending on like yeah. what geographical region that you're in. But it's almost kind of like um like a frosting neat, oh, frosting yeah. adjacent coating kind of. Yeah, it's like it's like a thicker puppy chow kind of thing. Or it's not chocolate. It's not like powdery. It's like very much like someone drizzled white chocolate all over the stuff and it sticks together. Yeah. And and that stuff that that's been you know uh, we got some of that yesterday. That was that that was really good uh, for me. So um you know I can't say it's peppermint. Can't say it's chocolate. But like a white anything white chocolate for me. I usually try mm-hmm. to to dive into. Mike, how about yourself? What is what is on your dessert? Uh, for, for the, for the sweet treat, uh, it's gotta be the, and I don't know if this is necessarily a Christmas cookie, but this is where I've always seen them personally. Mm. It's like the peanut butter sugar cookie that you put a Hershey kiss in the middle of. Oh yeah. And it there's a, like little boobs. Some, yeah, there's it. a magical transformation that happens because, uh, the, the, the Hershey kiss, or sometimes you can substitute with a Rolo, which that is next yeah. level. Uh, you don't necessarily bake that particular piece of candy into the cookie. As soon as the cookie comes out of the oven, you you kind of stamp it into the middle, and this magic happens where there's just enough residual heat left over from the cookie. It almost like yeah. denatures the candy, mm. so it becomes like biteable. It's kind of like uh, welding for... itself to it, but like not yeah, like, like like it's not like a like you didn't bake it and then it didn't melt into it, but like it still merges with the cookie. Yeah, but now it's like it's like soft. It's like permanently softer mm-hmm. now, so you can actually take a bite into the Hershey Kiss or the Rollo. Uh, so uh, my wife made some of those this weekend. Oh, so nice. I've been, ooh, I've been going into those. So we, we have some ginger. Ooh, we have some ginger cookies that are, um, they, I, they're not gingerbread. They're they're, they're softer than gingerbread. Uh, mm-hmm. My wife made them. They got uh, sugar, uh, powdered sugar on them. I've really been enjoying those those softer ones as well. But um, yeah, I've definitely not. This is not the time to to look at the scale or really really take care of yourself. It's just time to indulge yeah. in those holiday time uh, treats. That you I get. mean. I feel like I feel like the the uh, holiday hack here though is if you want to make sure that you're getting more from your family or more mm-hmm. from Santa Claus or you know wherever you receive your uh, sweet treats is you get a get a life size stocking that would fit a Navi because they they yeah. got giant feet and you can yes. get as much uh, candy in so, there as so possible. Thank you for this transition, Mike. Uh, it's got to be a blue <laughs> stocking. But uh, go ahead before we get if you uh, like if you uh, if you're listening to the show, give, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would say if you come to us from our shorts that we're posting on YouTube and you've seen at least three shorts, we've earned that. Oh, subscribe, okay, Mike. okay, okay. This is where I have to do a shout out <laughs> to uh, my brother 
who I didn't even I like I don't know if my family listens to the podcast. I right. don't expect them to. Yeah, do, we, you know, if, we don't put that out there. You know, yeah, when I hear my voice, I talk with them on the phone or in like text messages. Uh, my brother was chatting with me today. He was just like, "Oh, you made an impromptu appearance at um at a family gathering oh, no. uh, last weekend." Oh no! But it, it's just <laughs> like, oh. Uh, you popped up on YouTube shorts and I was like, no, the whole, like the extended family saw a YouTube short and it's just like, yeah, that's my brother. He's a cartoon right there. Yeah. Um, and so I, I kind of was scary to me in a way. Yeah. So I, I guess if, uh, you were my family specifically watching me right now, I don't think this would be YouTube shorted. I'm not going to uh, cut this, this as a YouTube short, Mike. No, yeah, absolutely yeah. not. Uh, but uh i thought that was uh that that's was, and that just goes to show you if you want your family to pay attention to you uh cut yourself up into a, a youtube short because that's the only way that you get attention yeah. make yourself a real you know <laughs> all the kids are on tiktok these days but anyway uh like and subscribe that'd be that'd be great and then so let's jump into avatar um the avatar world recently uh we were actually just talking about this before the show the avatar frontiers of pandora game has come out uh, to pretty positive reviews. Again, uh, nothing, I, I think you said, nothing nobody has to go out and buy immediately. It's not changing the video game world. But yeah. if you enjoy the Avatar slash Pandora things, I think it's a good supplement for it. So Yeah, it's a, it's kind of screaming like a um, like a Game Pass game, or yeah. I don't know exactly what that's called on, because that's Xbox terminology, yeah, right? Yeah, it's game PlayStation Pass. Like Plus. It's, the, PlayStation yeah. Plus has like five different tiers now or something. Yeah, like, like this game, 100%, is going to be one of those... Uh, uh, one yeah. of those titles because it, it it has that triple a feel for sure but i don't it's, i don't think the the avatar ip is well that's the funny thing i don't think any like film ip is strong enough to inherently drive no. video game sales right like gamers want gta call of duty you know halo far these the, pre-existing titles that are homegrown video game ip you know so i will i will i will tell you normally yes in the, for the first time in 15 years a non call of duty game is the number one best-selling game of the year mike and oh, it's actually best selling this year hogwarts legacy is the best selling oh, game this year well, oh okay so that i would say maybe that's a little bit of yeah, a difference it, maybe a game that historically has not been well represented yeah possibly and then finally they get a good one i think the gameplay style um kind of fits the the dark souls the Je the star wars things but like there's no obviously hogwarts legacy movie right it's not a tie-in uh mm -hmm. kind of thing it's set in that world so i think i think you know we are in a trend where some of these things if done well uh could be done that but i think avatar if we are in a sea of triple a games this year this 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 year has been full of video games right that, that everyone wants to play so avatar you know, front of pandora I'm 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 gonna play it, but I'm not paying full price for this game, and, I, and I'm sorry mm -hmm. to say that out loud. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, the uh, cookie with a little Hershey in the middle. That's the way it's crumbling. <laughs> but, Delicious. Uh, the producer John Landau was gone to say uh, the third movie for Avatar is obviously we've talked about it before. It's completed, f finished filming a long time ago, and they're just editing. It would normally be out this year. It was scheduled to be out this Christmas, but they pushed it another year to kind of give some space for these event movies. Right? Avatar is now an event film franchise. Uh, based on last year. And the other thing they said, obviously we've re we reported this before, but just confirming that the fourth movie is partially finished because they filmed the intro with the kids at their current age back then, but they will have a six year time jump in the universe and they've not even come back to start filming the rest of the fourth movie yet because the kids have not aged up into that, that role yet. So Man, when they start I'm filming it, they will be the six years older than they, they should I'm, be. I'm so glad this, this franchise exists. Like it's like, it's not like everything I want in a movie universe for sure, but I'm just so glad it's like original IP. Like I can't, you know, scrounge the internet for theories of like, you know, you know, source material that they're using. It's just like it's all fresh mm. coming off James Cameron's dome, and um, it's a risk, right? I, like it could be good, it could fun. be bad. We we never know until we watch it, but. It seems they're like they're like the people involved are putting like a reverence towards it, like our reverence are like, oh, this is we want this to be good. We want to push technology. How we're using, we want to tell a good story and sell this world. And I think you know, again, Frontiers of the, uh, of Pandora, early video game, but like I can see a lot of these, you know, at the Avatar, like you mentioned, the IP growing and encompassing a lot more. I mentioned to you, like an Oculus Quest 
experience where you get to play as a Navi, right? Because that's the premise of the whole movie. Yeah. You're putting your conscious that, in, a, in, a, in an avatar body. Yeah. And that would be like fun scale too, because you're going to be slightly larger than everything else around you, mm-hmm. where I would say a lot of VR games are trying to kind of like put you in another world, but maybe you yourself are actually there. Yeah. But like, imagine being like a little bit taller and you can't quite fit through, you know, the door frames and all of the human characters are shorter than you. I think there'd yeah. be some fun scale there. And- and bow and arrow gameplay in VR is pretty pretty fantastic. Oh, right? just I just love bow and arrow, bow and arrow gameplay yeah. just in general. I just like love that stealth aspect. Of yeah, that. so like experience and stuff like that. But I, I think this is cool. I'm excited to revisit Pandora next year again. One of the the, the few 4Ks I picked up this year was was Avatar uh, Two, uh, The Way of Water. Uh, so um, definitely look forward to, to diving back into that. Wink, wink. Bad pun intended, Mike. <laughs> Uh, last week we talked about the Blade video game uh, jumping into our news feed and uh, the game concept art was released from the company, Mike. Uh, we have three uh, separate uh, images including here. One includes the first cityscape of Blade. And now this is concept art, mind you, from Arcane, not necessarily final art. But mm-hmm. it kind of is giving a, I would say, like a futuristic kind of yeah, city kind vibes of like to n- it. Like near future. Like yeah. you could see this maybe being the next like you know, 20, 30 years it, kind of want to, is it, it's like wanna... a brighter blade runner kind of vibe. If I, if I was going to be completely out. Yeah. Like, yeah. I could, yeah. A little bit. It's the griminess, but there's the technology, the floating ships. Uh, you know, obviously we have blade here. He's got a gun out he's got a sword. Uh, the next image I'm calling the nightclub where he's like in a dark alley at a nightclub. Uh, mm-hmm. is it a nightclub for vampires is you know is there some stealth sections of this game i don't really know but that little onion man behind blade is in every one of yeah. these images so yeah uh for that so gar you know obviously garlic it's garlic because of the vampires so you can check that out and then lastly we get to see a uh, blade it looks like he's fighting like maybe bats like uh, you know uh representative of bats in a subway while the mm-hmm. vampires are on the train in front of him which i thought was pretty cool yeah I, this is just gonna be a fun setting right i can't really recall ever kind of being stationed in like Paris for a particular video game that other, I've other than before. like a shooter game, which is like, you know, you blink and you miss it in their setting. Yeah. The and you're on, yeah. you're on to the next like world stage trying to defuse a bomb, like someplace yeah. else. So yeah. I think so. This will be fun, but um, it kind of gives me some verticality scale, right? Like he's on top of a building, he's in an alley at a nightclub and then he's in a subway. So it sounds like you're going to yeah. have a lot of different areas to play with in Paris. Yeah, uh, I mean, I am a very specific type of gamer, so I, I, I never try to impose my kind of thoughts and feelings of gameplay onto a game because you got to sell a game to way more people than just me. But I love um, I love platforming, I love traversal, I love stealth, so any of that stuff mm-hmm. would be would be welcome to me. And I think vampires, again, from the, at least if they take the vampire from the movies we've watched with Blade, right? Where they disintegrate into like, you know, like ash and cinder a little bit would mm-hmm. be pretty cool. A visual effect yeah. as you're kind of tearing through the vampire. So, I mean, uh, I know this is going to be um, a next gen game for sure. So they're going to be, you know, powering everything with like high end hardware, but we saw the trailer and it has like, not, it's not low poly. That's not, that's not the right way to do it, but very, very stylized look to it that i feel like actually like a rendering engine would really prefer so maybe like this could have like very short load times or invisible load screens yeah. uh I don't i'm overloading screens war- mike i don't want them i've I played spider-man 2 i want no load screens anymore mike. oh my god chris it is so is so hard for me to go back to tears of the kingdom <laughs> because uh, i i'm just gonna use this minute just to get on my soapbox and rant about tears of the kingdom i get it <laughs> It's a it's an amazing Zelda game. Everybody loves it. I think it's like IGN's like game of the year. It's a darling. I think I, yeah. I I think I did myself a disservice playing this game right after Breath of the Wild because my assumption was the the game dev team would like learn from some of the few annoyances that came from Breath of the Wild and maybe try to fix them. But if anything, Tears of the Kingdom is just more of every everything. So if there is one thing in Breath of the Wild that kind of annoys you, it's it's just uh, statistically it's there's going to be more of it. So like every shrine that you do, exact same unskippable text uh, prompts. Well, not unskippable, but you have to skip them every single time. You have to no. let them activate. Uh, there's just like a long drawn out 
yeah. conversations that like don't matter. Like I know they're trying to give like kind of like character and like color and you know special moments, but it's just like I'm mashing the skip button because I'm and I'm just looking for like the important like red text of the next place I need to go. Uh, so it's just like the some of the parts of the game are so fun and like so creative, but like they yeah. this game desperately needed quality of life adjustments and one of those is definitely like loaders like there is some long loading like well, when you fast travel to places and going from the amazing fast travel of spider-man so, 2 to the fast travel of tears of the kingdom makes me want to tear my hair i, I will tell you, you 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 your disservice is actually playing spider-man because you will always 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 and i would tell us everybody have load screens on Nintendo Switch. There's no loadless game. And I, I play Pokemon. Like, the Pokemon's, like, the, supposed to be the renderless open world style, and there's still load screens when you go in, you know, the bigger cities and stuff like that. So, it, it, playing the Switch, you, you're, you're, I guess, you know, you're giving up power for for portability and, and gameplay. Yeah, play, absolutely. But like, I guess. But like, at the same time, you know, hopefully they do that Nintendo Switch too soon and we can all hop on that board. Uh, and, you know, they catch up to last generation, finally, on their games. But... Um, I, I, I'm excited for Blade. I think, you know, obviously you hit the nail on the head. It will be a next-gen game, so we got to have those consoles um, to, to play that. But hopefully, the, again, the load screens are gone, and then the gameplay is pretty pretty solid all around. So uh, check out. We have all three separate links in our show notes, so check out all three of those uh, links in there if you want to. Deadpool movie, obviously, making rounds. Everybody wants to talk about Deadpool right now because it's the only Marvel movie for next year, uh, which is a, a good thing. Uh, but Marvel has officially retitled it the Untitled Deadpool movie for marketing distribution. So it's no longer officially titled Deadpool 3. My guess is that they're going to come up with a Deadpool and Wolverine or like dead, like we talked about Deadpool kills the MCU. Something something mm-hmm. silly, silly for Deadpool, right, along the way. Deadpool, maybe Deadpool kills the Fox universe since that's we've seen all the, you know, the screenshots having the, the Fox stuff in there. Um, or they could just call it Untitled Deadpool movie because that could be funny if it's the real name. But. Yeah, that could be funny. Uh, maybe I don't know if you remember this or not, Chris, but we were waiting forever for the title of that last Avengers movie, Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, did they reveal the title in the teaser trailer, um, or was like the title also in the YouTube title? Because it would be kind of fun if the title reveal happened at the end of the teaser trailer. So, like, you know, I get it for SEO; they want to put the full title on there. But maybe at least for the first twenty-four hours, they could leave the title. You know, just like. Deadpool 3 trailer, untitled Deadpool movie, and then... Because I think Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe would be a really fun reveal to have to see it like the end so, of a trailer. So, Endgame was not in the title of the... They did not put it in the title. They were just like Avengers trailer. Avengers 2024 trailer, or whatever. Uh, okay. 2019 trailer. But it was in the end... It was a visual at the end of the trailer. Like, it was in the, the actual trailer mm-hmm. itself. It's because they didn't want to give it away because people would just share the link and give it away. But that was... Um, I, I looked it up. Um, it, it was December. It's actually, I think I just saw it like a week ago. We are, we are like on the fifth year of the title reveal. And that movie came out in April. So, you know, we may be getting a Super Bowl trailer, Mike, with this title reveal in it, is what I'm thinking. Mm, like, yeah. Because it's coming out in July. It's the only Marvel movie. They only have to push one set of commercials uh, or mo- the same commercial multiple times. Ryan Reynolds is, he loves doing his Mint Mobile commercials, Mike. If I had a nickel <laughs> for every Mint Mobile I did- commercial I saw with him in it. I didn't realize this, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, Ryan Reynolds has his own commercial um, like agency. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's kind of started just as like you know for tax purposes. You know, oh, whenever I'm in a commercial, pay my company instead of me or whatever. But like he's done, I guess, other commercials for other brands. You know, yeah. where he's not in it, but they're kind of rinsing and reusing like a similar like formula for just kind of like you know shock and all marketing you, you, or whatever. Yeah. So I, I mean I'm guessing again we we are in that time of year where Super Bowl is uh, a little about a month a little month and a half to maybe two months at most away uh, so I'm very excited to to start getting excited for that so I'm I'm expecting a Super Bowl reveal Mike I'm gonna gonna call it today for that all right uh, earlier today John Cena has shared a cryptic image of just the Deadpool leaks uh, John Cena has not historically been in the Marvel universe uh, or anywhere but. Uh, Two things come to mind. One is their Peacemaker crossover, right? Because, you know, James Gunn is the the connecting here. So will they do a Peacemaker shows up in John Cena's... Or, you know, Peacemaker shows up in Deadpool is like a funny joke referencing the other universe. Or will he get a, be another Marvel character in this, you think? Oh, that would be funny. Like, how would you... I could see it working in a Deadpool movie as like a one-off joke of, his, of like, you know, 
Deadpool looking over at Peacemaker like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be yeah. here. Oh, you the know, DCU, like the DCEU was killed kind of thing, like right because that's yeah. like a huge thing on the deal. Yeah, that could be really funny. Um, but also, like, I like the idea of John Cena being John Cena is like the only like, uh, like the only like big muscly tough guy that I'm I'm really like excited about in Hollywood right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying other big muscly tough guys. Uh, the can't Rock catch and Vin my... Diesel can hear you right now. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's just so he's just so fun, and it's yeah. gonna be a while until we see more Peacemaker because I, I I think it's still that that Amanda Waller right. show that's supposed to be happening first. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm missing out on John Cena. Yeah, and he was recently in Barbie, which is now on Max, right? As a, as a was a, a Ken a version of Ken as well. Like he is very, he's got a self deprecating humor. He's not too serious about himself. He isn't like he can take a shot at himself and um, and be funny about it, right? So yeah, even if apparently he, he um, could be, even be John Cena in here, we've had celebrities appear in other Deadpool movies as well. Yeah, that's true. Apparently, Eagly makes a cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Uh-huh. Um, because uh, Gunn shared some side-by-side storyboards, and he uh, confirmed that the eagle you kind of see with the big animal yeah. board shot, the eagle's in there, which yeah. um, sure, kind of funny not? because it's just like I, I'm kind of curious if, if he's like, Same oh, character here's model. <laughs> here here's the actual character model, which like just get an eagle, you know, yeah. they all look the same. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sharing this image, I, I I think he'd be he'd be funny no matter what they put him in, right? Even if it's just him mm-hmm. as a character um kind of deal so we, we I, I i'd love to see that so we'll we'll keep you guys posted if we hear more and then also uh fun fact deadpool has topped the list of 2024's most anticipated movies not just superhero movies not just marvel movies because it's the only one but overall all movies deadpool 3 is the number one movie for next year so uh most anticipated movie for next year which i think is well deserved we've, we've been a long time without it and they are really i again i watched deadpool 2 like a week and a half ago uh, had a really good time revisiting that, so I think this is this is great to be back in that uh, the comedy zone, if you will, of Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, check out that li- uh, that list. Uh, there's some other stuff on there. Uh, guess what was not on there? Madam Web and, and Craven <laughs> the Hunter. Mike, neither of those were on the, that list. So we're not even going to talk about the movie posters for Madam Web because they were just so bad. But we'll just know there are movie posters out there for that. In the MCU world, uh, hitting us in January, the first uh, big uh, property in January is uh, Echo, the uh, five-episode seri- limited series uh, on Disney+, Plus, all streaming the same day. And the new trailer uh, today uh, has dropped, and it actually says, Viewer Discretion Advised. Viewer which is what, Discretion Advised. Which is the uh, what they put on, like, um, yeah, whenever you're watching America's Most Wanted or Cops or whatever the, the, the shows are with violence, stuff like that. So they are really... You know, we, we were talking about this before. They are really just trying all sorts of uh, yeah. uh, marketing for this, uh, to, to see which audience it hits with. I guess. Cause yeah. There's probably like, going to be li- a lot. Like, listen, I you know I get it. You know, this is going to be darker than some of the other Marvel stuff, more violent. Uh, they're they've just started trying to teach you know their user base to use parental controls. Don't let your kid accidentally you know yeah. watch this one. I, you know, I get it. You kind of gotta and, you know, make uh, it a point that this is more adult. And I but think there's legalities is, if it's over TV 14, you have to say certain things. But yes, yeah. But this is totally a marketing gimmick. They are yeah. playing it up like no one's business. They're like. How are we going to get people excited about this? Tell them there's going to be violence. There's yep. going to be blood. They highlighted an entire like you know. Uh, it looked like a daredevil action scene. scene. It looked like yeah, a daredevil exactly. Fight scene, yeah. They, 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 and then and then I was telling Chris this is the this is the first time in a long time I've ever heard a narrator in a trailer, and it's like you're going to want to see this violence, blood. You got to watch Echo because it's hardcore. It, it was just so like that mm. is what it felt like I was watching. So yeah, I I I almost kind of laughed too because um they were building it up like this epic event, and then it says all five episodes like five yeah. episodes like it's this huge monumental thing like blink and you miss it is five episodes on disney plus so i this is not a criticism anyway i just think it's really funny of like we got to try something what, yeah. what's gonna work let's make the most intense trailer well, I, th- we I think one of the things you know a lot of people complain about i hear you know from from regular people work like i don't want to commit to more than you know, if it's over six episodes, I don't want to commit to it, right? Like, we talked, I've tried to get people to watch Monarch Legacy of Monsters. So they're like, okay. I'm like, it's on, you know, Apple TV, uh, so you can wait till it's done. They're like, okay, you know, what, how is it, you know, is it a couple episodes, three, four, five, six? I'm like, well, it's 10. They're like, oh. And then they just shut down. They're like, I don't want to commit to 10 episodes. Like, that's a lot of time 
for hour long things. So I, I'm excited to kind of see what this is, what it does, whether it's good or not remains to be seen, but you know, uh, an all in one kind of deal. We've not had that before. And is, is five a better number than six on some of these Marvel shows, right? Uh, to, to keep the story tight. I could not tell you, mm-hmm. but that's going to be our first thing. I think it's like the first week in January, right? Uh, I'm going to have yeah. to click on this to view the trailer. Cause it's probably going to tell me in the sh- January 9th, uh, which is a Thursday. So they have moved it up the day before. So that, that's the other thing, January 9th. Uh, on Disney Plus, so I'm gonna put that in the show notes. So if you're worried about watching it on Friday, you can catch it on Thursday night. But I'm not gonna watch all five episodes Thursday night, for for sure. Moving on, uh, Disney Plus dropping new content for us this uh, week, Mike. Uh, season two of What If starts December 22nd, so that's coming up around the corner. Um, pretty pretty excited to see this. I've heard the animation was improved from season one, like not changed, but like improved drastically. Maybe with that extra time they've had to kind of refine it. Yeah. I could also see, you know, it's a uh, what if was a, the very first kind of animated show that they kicked off. You know, you got to yeah. figure out your pipelines, you know, how smoothly and, everything wears your like, you know, your your bottlenecks and everything. And one of the episodes was even canned comple- or delayed, I guess, to season two. Right. Like they didn't even weren't even able to even hit their deadline with uh, mm-hmm. the original release. I think it was like it was a covid animation show. Is that what they uh-huh. I guess when they kind of did a lot of those. I'm excited. Um, you know, they 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 released the um, the episode titles, which we've already kind of confirmed on the show here. Uh, but I was looking at the Christmas Day episode is "What If Iron Man Crashed into the Grandmaster?" But on Christmas Eve, you can watch "What If Happy Hogan Saved Christmas" uh, with with your family. So Chris, l- let me let me run this past you because we yeah. were uh, we were watching Christmas movies uh, yesterday. And we were all, you know, obviously fawning over uh, the Muppets Christmas Carol. Everybody was really, yeah. really digging it. You like the it. lamp and not the rat. Just remember yeah. that. It's just, it's great. It's a perfect movie. Uh, but we started thinking, like, it's a shame because that that new uh, Muppet project was just uh, canceled. The electric, Mayhem. what was it? The electric mayhem. Yeah. yeah. So we were just like, what is it going to take to reboot these Muppets and get let people care again? And I think we've even talked about kind of like the secret formula on this show for the Muppets is like, they like to skewer. They like to be satirical. Yeah. They like to parody. And I feel like there's nothing more right for parody, you know, talking about Deadpool or than like superheroes. So like mm-hmm. what I feel like if, if, if it's Muppets can be pirates, if they can go in space, like why can't they also get uh superpowers for a movie? I think that'd be really funny. You could have cameos from uh, Avengers actors yeah. and maybe they could just play themselves. Like it'd be really funny to see like one of the Muppets get like, you know, punched off screen, you know, they fly and hit a wall and then they look up and like Robert Downey Jr.'s there. He's just the, playing himself and he's just like, uh, sir, can you help me? And he's like, oh no, I'm, 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 I'm over the, that stuff. Like it's, 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 it's like, there's so many things that they could do. And the Muppets are, you know, inherently, um, you can beat them up because there's no blood. There's no violence, right? They, they don't get harmed. Mm. They, they literally bounce back. So absolutely. I, I think, you know, Muppets, we, I, the TV shows for Muppets are not where the revival is. If I'm going to be completely honest, I think you, I know this, you know this, right, Mike, the TV shows, they've tried two different ones in, since the last movie and nothing has stuck. Um, and if you look at, there's like really like three eras of, of Muppet movies, the original three, uh, and then there's Christmas Carol, Treasure Island, which are the two, you know, everyone knows very familiar. And then there's the more recent ones, which are okay. So I think, yes, you need to do superheroes. I think there's like, you know, maybe, maybe even an idea like, is there like a fast and furious with Muppets kind of thing? Oh, I like that. Like, you know, how can we, I, I don't want them. I don't want them to turn into like scary movies where they're, they're skewering them too much, but like, you know, what, how do we take some of these bigger things and do that? Maybe, maybe we even go back even simpler. Maybe we don't do modern. Maybe we go back and skewer some of the stuff because like, um, you know, Disney owns a lot of stuff. They can mix and match, you know, their copyrights from that. Maybe, um, mm-hmm. is it the rescuers being revived, but with the Muppets like kind of deal? Like, you yeah. Know? So there's so many things they can mix, mix and match classic or, or modern slash contemporary, uh, along the way. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, oh, I yeah they could, you could kind of, you could kind of just do like maybe a general kind of like fantasy, like Disney princess style movie where, you know, you kind of like mash up a couple different ideas and concepts, but you know, yeah. you play in the fantasy world, and you could do a superhero world. Yeah, like man. a Lord of the Rings, but Muppets would be yeah kind of hilarious. It, Come it, on, Holly, you can't. I because I'm starting to get a little worried, right? Because we are getting more and more 
uh, younger generations that have not been properly exposed to the Muppets. Mm -hmm. So I don't want them to kind of die on the well, vine. So they are, so. I will tell you the Muppet baby show has been huge on Disney junior. Um, just, just let you know that the, the, the CGI well, animated that's one, uh, that's good. The, and, and those, um, that actual, uh, I guess, uh, the merchandise with that has been even bigger, uh, with, with that. My, I was at my father was yesterday. His, he has a little dog. His little dog actually had a super, uh, like a Kermit in a superhero, uh, toy that he played with, but it was like a baby toy they bought for the dog. Cause he's a smaller dog. So like the superhero thing is there, but like the, some of the stuff is, is still, still alive, thankfully, but like they need to tap into some of this other stuff. Uh, and, and kind of like, remember I, I have one record, like when, when the Muppets did, uh, records with John Denver. I have two separate Muppet John Denver vinyl records, Mike. Okay, why, why are we not doing more Muppet sing-alongs with people? So, um, I, I I think there's a bunch of options. We had the Muppets Haunted Mansion. I think that was a fun skewering, but like kind of still niche, if you will, along the way. Uh, so yeah, I agree. There, there needs to be more of this. I forgot how we got on the Muppets. It was the what if we were talking about Disney stuff, Mike. Good lord. Uh, you got you got me going there for a second, um, <laughs> but I've linked the the episodes in there for 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 what if um, what what if the Avengers were Muppets? What that is exactly what the, the what if oh, episodes need yes, to be. Please. So there it is. Uh, season three of what if also confirmed to be in progress from the team. So it sounds like we are going to get those three seasons we've theorized about for several years now. So mm. um, great as long as they continue. Like again. I think my problem with the first season, Mike, and then we all have you know heard me speeches. It just didn't do enough to vary on it. They're like, well, what if uh, Sharon Carter was or not Sharon, but whatever Peggy Carter was Captain America? Like, they didn't do enough differences. Give us the differences. Let's see what the real what ifs are. Um, and I kind of want to see what the payoff is for this one, right? We we got that tease with the Ultron at the last one. So, what is the the big one on on this one at the end of the day? X Men ninety. Uh, let's jump into this animates this other stuff we need here. Uh, so twenty twenty four Marvel announced some anima some new animated projects and some really say so. X Men ninety seven will finally hit Disney Plus in twenty twenty four. Mike, we are on the cusp of this show to return. Do you are you going to revisit X Men uh, ninety ninety four before? I'm, I'm I'm really curious if this is where ninety two whenever the, it was. Like I'm curious if the rubber is going to hit the pavement on this one, right? I, I, I'm not really, I'm not trying to pick on X Men here because I love the '90s X Men. We all do, you know. But I'm curious how strong, like, really is nostalgia truly? And I just started thinking about this recently. I was listening to a podcast where um, the hosts were kind of running down the history of SWAT Cats, that show mm -hmm. back in the day. And obviously, you can't compare SWAT Cats to X Men, like, you know, either in like reception, quality, length, all totally different. But the creators of SWAT Cats for a while have been like trying to pitch like a reboot, you know, bring it back. Uh, but like, I barely think there's even enough nostalgia. Like, who's going to watch that, right? Like, I think me and, like, two other people that I know personally yeah, this is, know even what very, SWAT Cats is. That's a very niche, niche kind of thing, Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying 90s X-Men, you know, is niche, but, like, at the quality and scale for a show like that, I'm just kind of curious, you know, is the, is the nostalgia kind of play, is the nostalgia well going to run dry at some point in time? And I feel like maybe the first signs we start to see it might be with some of these kind of like cartoon revivals, right? Uh, I mean, I know it's this is not the barometer for success always, but you know, I, I don't think I'm gonna get like my wife or some of my super close friends to watch the the X Men. 90s yeah, but reboot, but I think but... the difference is they know what X Men from the '90s is. If you said is this X Men and showed them an image from the '90s, they would know what that was. Um, yeah. and I think I, that, I just, that pays off a little bit more than just if they watch it or not. Cause yeah, I, I think just to, strategically, they have to meet the, meet the audience where they're at. Right. Everybody who's going to watch this day one is all in their thirties and forties. Right. Yeah. So I, I think it has to be more mature, I, I, but you know, it was always kind of mature to begin with. So that's a good yeah. start. Well, and it's continuation, which, which is the other good part, right? It's, this isn't a reboot. This isn't a you know, uh, a reimagining. This is a continuation of that. So the characters are there and most of the voice actors are returning. So that's ex got me, you know, excited. I would say the, the biggest thing, and I, I disagree that the nostalgia thing will ever wear off because it's always cyclical. I just think the breath has been taken out of the room because we've had to wait so long for this. 
I mean, that is true. We've had to wait for years. It feels like five years for this to come out. And, you know, the toys are landing. The, the merchandise has already landed. This is All this is out in the market already, but where's the show to go along with it? Um, to me, I think the X-Men, especially the, the Jim Lee designed X-Men are, are timeless. Like everyone knows what they are. They're iconic when you think mm-hmm. X-Men. So I don't think that'll be a problem, but boy, I'm just exhausted talking about it. When will it just happen? Show <laughs> me, show me the animation, show me a teaser. Stop telling me it's coming out and just let it come out and give us something to look at. So I, I think that's what I need the most. And, um, maybe, maybe though, I don't know if they have this on Disney plus, and this is probably a bad representation. Might have, have they upgraded the dis- the old ones to 1080 yet to, to, to HD on Disney plus, or are they still the, the native resolution or fake 1080? So, mm-hmm. um, I, I'd like to revisit it, but we'll, we'll see if that crosses the bridge there. A new animated series was announced this week. And, and I say new, and I use this term loosely because I think we've, we've theorized slash reported on this before, but never given a title, but it's called eyes of Wakanda, an animated series, uh, based on the Wakanda war dogs. Uh, is coming to Disney Plus in 2024. So, uh, for anyone asking, this is a different art style than the What If series, so do not be concerned it's going to look the same. Um, but we have talked about, you know, the Wakanda spinoff series for a while, uh, and I think we had several reports several years ago that was animated, so this is the confirmation that the Wakanda spinoff series is not live action, it is in fact an animated anthology series of sort about the war dogs of Wakanda. Yeah, that uh, that Wakanda, you know, kind of expanded universe that was announced a few years ago has, has really started to change, right? It was going to be, um, was it? It was Ryan Coogler. Was he yeah, technically he, like spearheading all of that yeah, back he, when it was announced? And I think he's got his hands on this, but um, yeah, it's it's not as it's not the same layout it was years a couple years ago. Yeah, I I, I want I, I feel like it's not necessarily you know indicative of maybe what they thought the quality was going to be end up being. I just think so many things have happened. Like this is mm-hmm. the problem that we talk about a lot, where we're always excited to hear things announced, but you know there's been so much turmoil in Hollywood, like the last like four or five years now that everything has just changed from when they make these announcements. Like the whole landscape has changed. Every you know, I'm year sure. it's a different thing like to yeah. deal with. And you're like, well, yeah. what's going to be, what's going to be delayed? What quality is going to suffer because it wasn't delayed and so on and so forth. Yeah. And you lose momentum too. And you got to remember people in Hollywood are humans as well. So like Ryan, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that this is what happened, but theoretically Ryan Coogler was maybe really amped to really expand this whole like Wakanda universe. He was on board, ready to hit the ground running. And then all of these delays came up, COVID, you know, strikes well, I, and I everything. Didn't even say and he's it, like, maybe he's like a different person now and wants to do I, something else. I 100% disagree. I think the death of Chadwick Boseman has derailed all of their Wakanda plans. Yes, uh, that like, is true. Like you could, you, COVID or not, the, 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 the loss of the one iconic figure between two movies just totally ripped the rug out from under everybody. And um, without that, I, I think even though the movie, the second movie came and went, it was very much a, it, it's a good movie, uh, unlike any other, most other superhero movies, you just don't have that steam. Like that, again, I talk about air being sucked out of the room, his passing, the air sucked out of the room, right? For everybody. Mm-hmm. You're like, what do we do with this? Is it still there? They didn't recast him, so they're kind of just floating on, you know, uh, what's her name? Um I can't think of the actress's name, Letitia Wright. Her sister, yeah. yeah, uh, who you know went through her own you know COVID issues of you know being a vaccine denier kind of thing, and then we you know and we had COVID, and then we have Bob Chapek ruining everything, and then we had Bob <laughs> Iger saying cut back on things, and then like again there there's writing strikes. I don't think the writing strike would affect this because this would have had to been in production a while ago to make it right. So, um, but like, there's just so much and you're just like, Oh, what do what do you do? How do you get stuff even done yeah. with that many things working against you? So, yeah. uh, the moral I, of this, I feel like we, we had a clear picture and then that picture is not clear. Right. It, we knew there was going to be a Wakanda spinoff. We thought it was going to be live action. We have an animated version now. That's not saying the live action isn't coming. Uh, but you know, this was a, I, I would say a welcome surprise to hear some different stories in, in the MCU that are not, you know, uh, I would say they're inconsequential, I guess at the end of the day. So it'll be fun to revisit that. Cause I think Wakanda does have the culture. I would not be surprised if eventually Disney, one of the Disney parks opens up like a Wakanda section 
in one of the Disney oh, that'd parks. Be, that'd be rad. Uh, Animal Kingdom could use some extra life next to the Pandora section uh, <laughs> for that. So absolutely. But yes, so Eyes of Wakanda animated series coming out to 2024 on the streaming service. The other big news is uh, the uh, the Spider-Man freshman year uh, anime show has now been retitled Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Um, and will arrive on Disney Plus next year as well. So we talked about Spider-Man freshman year. There's supposedly still the second one, Spider-Man quote, quote, sophomore year. But um, it's the same universe, same art style, same everything. They just retitled it to Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. I don't like yeah, either feel, one of these titles, but that's fine. Well, yeah. I mean, I felt like freshman year was indicative of the original promise that this was going to be like Tom Holland's freshman year of high school, but then things changed and things changed again and changed again. Uh, they, so this again, might be a little bit was, more accurate. <laughs> uh, well, I saw that there, there was never any promise that it was very much like people assumed calling it Spider-Man freshman year was Tom Holland, but it's always been from when they announced it, like this is a retelling of Spider-Man in a different universe, if you will, a parallel universe. But fre- I just don't freshman year doesn't tell me what the what the what it is. Like, you know, we saw the artwork. He's been Spider Man apparently in this universe, right? Because he has all the different suits and the different villains already. Uh mm-hmm. so like I, the idea is like spectacular Spider Man obviously takes from the comic books. Your friendly neighborhood Spider Man is from the comic books, but it's really it's a long title. Like can we can we get a better one? Can we can we get a better title in here for this? Like <laughs> is you know, Marvel Spider or do we just call it Marvel Spider Man? Right, like, or um, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not in a, in a title thinking mood right now. But we are going to get this uh, next year. We've seen the artwork. We've seen the, the concept art. I'd like to see the animation uh, coming. This we do have again Charlie Cox returning to voice Daredevil and some other actors. So um, they will have some um, similarities to the MCU at large. But we're 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 um, the, we have raised up our you know. Our shows from next year, we have one movie, Deadpool 3. We have three animated shows, X-Men 97, Eyes of Quantum, Spider-Man, Fresh Mirror, on top of the three live-action shows, which are Echo, Agatha, uh, the Agatha show. And what was the other animated or live-action show next year, Mike? Um, oh, uh... Boy, I feel like I'm missing <laughs> something here. I, I, we got to pull up our, 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 our superhero slate, uh, you know, release date. I'm trying to think. I don't think it's Ironheart. Uh Cause I'm thinking of, I'm thinking Star Wars in my head too. It's not it's not Ironheart. 2024, uh, Deadpool three. Uh, maybe maybe it is Ironheart. Maybe it is Ironheart next year, Mike. So um, we'll see we'll see how this goes. Because Daredevil is not happening next year, right? We've all we've all come to that realization. That's that's for mm-hmm. 2025. So uh, maybe maybe it is Ironheart finally. So we're gonna be seeing a different kind of uh, scope on Disney Plus next year. A very very very. Str- it seems stripped back one and, you know a lot of spaces in between releases so we'll see how that affects everything some other news coming into this spider-man 4 mike this is some room uh some some hot rumors here at the end of the week but the movie is rumored to have daredevil and ant-man as supporting characters in this Ooh, i like that they're basically giving me what i want in the in the next uh, spider-man video game yeah. of Spider-Man palling around with some other heroes. Uh, this could be a fun dynamic because every time we see Spider-Man with these other heroes, it's in an Avengers movie and it's like large scale. The universe is at stake. So I, I could, mm-hmm. it would be funny to kind of just see them, you know, trying to get the some problem solved and it's just a, just a, a fun little duo or trio like that. Yeah, so um, from what I've... What the rumor is coming out, uh, and this is as of today, is that this will kind of be a street-level version of Civil War, if you will, um, where some of these lower-level characters uh, will be kind of um, against each other or not. Uh, the the rumor is that... Um, and this again, everything always changes, so don't don't hold us against this, but that um, the... the Kingpin will become the mayor of New York at some point in this, right? And outlaw vigilantes because he's very mad at Daredevil at some point. So um, you'll probably have people who are, you know, for the law and against the law coming out to each other. And, you know, Ant-Man, despite his his adventures in a quantum realm, has always been more of the street level guy, right? This guy on the street, if you will. Um, We have Spider-Man. We have Daredevil. Who else else are we going to... I don't think there's anyone else i can think of come to mind out of this right like you know uh yeah. i mean i suppose they could use this as an avenue to maybe introduce some yeah. other i mean maybe this is where luke cage pops back on the scene or jessica jones you know kind punisher. of like, I, we, I know that we I, we heard the punisher kind of coming back yeah. in this as well 
soft oh. relaunch then maybe this is maybe you just bring back every kind of netflix hero in a spider-man movie mm-hmm. i mean man talk about like a that's a that's a good uh a bill of goods right there yeah. getting them all in a spider-man movie and you know that's where like we just finished playing the spider-man game and you know he's an active hero he's got lots of things to do because he's got a balance being a hero and you know his real yeah. life so and i'd love to see his real life he's got to be bustling I, i'd love to see his real life post uh dr strange right like he doesn't have tony stark support he doesn't no one knows who he is he right he's living in that apartment and following the the crime so i'd love to know what his life is and how he's handling that i think this is also a good um kind of opportunity to not you know you know have a Again, not people with powers who are not like, again, like you mentioned, world ending, right? This is like small mm-hmm. stuff. Spider Man, he he is in these big things, but he's also known to be uh, on on the level, if you will. Um, I was trying to think here, you know, do we what what do we do with this? Like, you know, um, what other you know, how do we introduce some other characters? But we don't really need to really at the end of the day. Maybe maybe Kate Bishop, she's in New York, right? Um, from Hawkeye. She'd be street level vigilante, um, but we don't need. I don't think we need the over stuff to kind of, you know, civil. I like civil war. We built up to civil war. We earned it, but I don't think we need to introduce a bunch of characters who've not had a lot of screen time, all at once, if you will, mm-hmm. um, for it. So um, I, I think I think this would be this would be a good time. I hope they they kind of get something uh, on the level soon, and and do that. You know, I was thinking. I don't know. It was I was it was I was thinking of this, the villains from Spider Man One, Mike, like. Uh, there's like Hammerhead, and then there's that guy who showed up in Spider-Man Two, who can't be poisoned or killed. He's got the gray skin. Oh, Tombstone. Uh, Tombstone, right? Like these characters. Like are these kingpins? You know, he's bringing in his heavy hitters for the first time, rather than the oh, heroes. Oh yeah. Um, because because we've got someone like the I guess New York is known for its mob stuff, mafia stuff. So maybe he brings in some some street level heavy hitters. Do we need Bullseye so soon again? Probably not. You think? Oh yeah, I forgot about Bullseye. Bullseye, Electra, even right. Electra is kind of in that that vein of, you know, if you have Daredevil, you have an Electra. Um, some people mention Cloak and Dagger, and I don't like. I don't think we need them yet either. They they don't need to be over here. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, opportunity. Sky's the limit on Spider Man, right? And when you put some people in a Spider Man movie, people are going to watch it, whether it's good or bad. So, we'll see that. But speaking of bad Spider Man things, I've been waiting to talk to you about this. <laughs> all week because spider-man turn off the dark was a play that ran from 2011 to 2014 on broadway and i believe killed several people uh, or at least very much well, injured them horribly. now was it a play or was it a musical it, it, it it's a musical but it was on a play it was on the stage it's not a movie yeah it's i just, I just, everyone, yeah, yeah, it, I just it, couldn't remember uh, is there iconic no, singing oh, <laughs> absolutely yeah because bono and the edge did all the music for it like you can go uh, okay like um one of the songs is actually pretty good. I, I, it's nothing against the music. The the production sign and some of the crazy shit in this, but like people were falling off the wires, like into the crowds. Like even South Park has parodied this. Like to to like that's how big it has hit. You know the, the mainstream stuff. So, uh, are you familiar with the blacklist in Hollywood, Mike? Yes, the the blacklist, which uh, it sounds uh, counterintuitive because it sounds like oh, that's the list you go where things are bad or. You're getting like blackballed, and or it's whatever. not the TV no. show, The Blacklist, either. So. Yeah, The Blacklist is where you want to be. That's where all the hottest. Uh, that's where all the hottest, most yes. sought after scripts are kind of like, um, are are percolating. Yes, so it's a place where uh, up and coming writers or you know really really good scripts that have not been purchased directly by studios or, you know, I guess original scripts right have been mm-hmm. uh, been made. Um, so uh exists so there is a literally a movie script based on the production the horrible production and release of spider-man turn off the dark on the blacklist called boy falls from sky and it has made (laughs) the 2023 blacklist for this man i so it's that's not necessarily always indicative that it gets purchased or made a lot of times the goal is to make it to the blacklist just so the writer gets some notoriety and gets picked up for other jobs. But I do kind of like this idea of like, oh, if, if this is like a, maybe not mockumentary, but kind of like humorous documentary, but you know, you're dealing with death. So maybe really not so yeah. much. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think who, 
who makes this right? You know, mm-hmm. uh, the first thing that pops into my head is that that A24? document. <laughs> yeah, it could be the documentary that was made around uh, the the creation of the Emperor's New Groove, but it never got released because there was so much um, there was so much drama behind the production of that movie. So obviously, any studio that wants to you know remain friendly with Disney probably not gonna maybe touch this sony yeah. could be the same but yeah it could be like an a24 well, could be a warner brothers you know it could be one of those situations where sony's like well this is a chance to make money off of it for once for the first yeah. time ever they could do that i mean so um i just looked up i i wanted to know this because i looked it up before and i forgot uh of the thousand screenplays uh, a little more than a thousand screenplays since 2005 at least 440 have been made as theatrical films mike so it has a 50 50 chance pretty much of being made uh, if someone does buy it other movies include Argo, American Hustle, Juno, King's Speech, Slumdog Millionaire, Spotlight, The Revenant, Descendants, and Hell or High Water. Uh, but I, I have um, a desire to watch this play, Mike. I, I, I've always wanted to see this. I did not get to see it on this run, and I, and it closed down. So I, I, I feel like I'm missing a Spider-Man cultural event that only a select few people got to see. Yeah, and, I know. What a bummer. And and this movie would be an opportunity to make i guess a um you know a, a chance to get to see some of it if it gets made um or maybe you know uh if they if they can include some of that i would love to see i know they film these plays mike when they when they do them i want to see a release on disney plus of this play i want to see <laughs> spider-man turn off the dark and watch it in all its, its glory but yeah, um, I mean, at least if they did like a like a, a documentary or a docu series or whatever about it, at least we, uh, I, I got to imagine the the funding would at least um, garner some you know clips, you know, go yeah. out to find some people that made some bootlegs, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would, I would, lo- I exactly. I would hope that I and maybe maybe it brings a resurgence so people can see it. I'm gonna I gotta pull up the Wikipedia thing because I'm like I gotta remember. Um, they were going to open this in Las Vegas, but they Vegas actually was like, this is too expensive. So I was going to see who who was it if uh, there was actual, um, you know, do, do cast injuries. I'm sorry. It, it looks like maybe they weren't killed. Maybe they were just horribly broken his feet, broken both wrists, so on and so forth. Good Lord. So this sucks. But um, I don't know. I'm, I, I'd like to see this. You know, we're, we're in a, a renaissance for musicals, right? Like people are filming musicals and and events, concert events, and putting them out on streaming services. So maybe, maybe there's a chance someone has a good screen, good recording of this that we could see one day. But we'll keep you posted if this gets turned into a movie. No chance right now, but if it does, we'll let you know. Superman Legacy. Nicholas Holt has been confirmed as Lex Luthor, as we partially reported on a couple weeks ago. So James Gunn has said, "Yes, we we have we have finally done this and hired him." I think that's fine. Yeah, I was looking up. Um... I think I was uh, Googling this earlier this week, and uh, the Hollywood seems to love to report uh, false things about this Superman movie, and James Gunn equally loves to shut them down. I just came across tons of, like, casting announcements that were all, like, via the Hollywood Reporter, you know, reputable sources out here in Hollywood. And uh, he would be like, that's not, not only is that not happening, but it hasn't even came up in conversations so it couldn't even be like something uh the male person heard out in the hallway so it's like oh man he's like he's being real strict about this yeah well it's one of the things you know people you know he has um previously worked with the guy who played lex Luthor on smallville what is his name mm-hmm. uh what is that actor's name mike uh oh i i can't recall his yeah, so he's been in, he's been in several Guardians of the Galaxy movie. He's good friends Michael Rosenbaum. He's been he's good friends with Michael Rosenbaum, who's played Lex Luthor. And they're like, well, why didn't you hire him to play Lex Luthor? And he's like, well, he's already done Lex Luthor. Like, we don't need him to come back and do it again. We want someone yeah. new and who then, fits this. Yeah, and of course you know all the headlines would be like, oh, is this a multiversal? Is is this going to be a Smallville sequel? It's like, yeah, you got to yeah. avoid all that. Nonsense. Yeah, exactly. And, and and you know, obviously post DC EU uh, after Aquaman comes out in theaters later this week. Uh, it, it's you, you've got to separate yourself and create this. So, you know, Nicholas Holt, I think he's a great actor. We've talked about this before. We went through this before all those movies. He's a great actor. He does good stuff. I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, but we are, you know, coming up on a year and a half away from S- Superman legacy, a lot of weight on this movie, right? A lot of, a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, expectations. Uh, I'm excited to get some confirmation and see kind of how this kind of turns out. So 
uh, we'll we'll keep you guys posted. If anything else comes out of this and is obviously true, we 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 try to pull all our sources from verified things rather than the, the rumor mill. But sometimes they they do slip through. But this is confirmed from Mister Gun himself. Lastly, Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon <laughs> Part One, A Child of Fire, I believe is his first one, right? The, the Scar Giver is the second one. Uh, ha- is releasing December 22nd on Netflix. So um, you can celebrate uh, on the 22nd or wait one day for your Festivus and air all your grievances out on the 23rd yeah. if you want to. This al- yeah, this almost didn't make it into the show notes this week. Um, and I was really confused of when this movie was coming out because I kept seeing like headlines of like, you can now see Rebel Moon earlier, like it- early advanced screenings now available then the critics reviews started to come in. I was like, wait, did Rebel Moon come out this weekend? And usually as we see like the pattern before is studios are excited to, to get the movie out early, you know, yeah. if the reviews are good. Uh, so uh, I ask you, Chris, mm-hmm. why, why, why would they do this when these reviews are awful? <laughs> yeah. So um, because uh, Zack Snyder has got to get his Twitter bot army to say the movie's good for him. Uh, I guess. Or, earlier. So, uh, Rebel Moon, um, a, a Child of Fire. The critics have have received it, and um, the re- first reviews come in. Obviously, the first place everybody goes is Rotten Tomatoes. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, as of today, I think are the first actual fan screenings in the like the short theatrical run as well. Um, mm-hmm. So those those are kind of kind of coming in as well. But the initial reviews were around nine percent for Rebel Moon, but they are now sitting at a solid twenty three percent of the critic reviews. Um, yeah, that is that is. I mean, obviously, Rotten Tomatoes has its own statistical definitions that you kind of have to run down in your head of like this isn't indicative of a grade rating. Yeah. This is just a percentage. One out of, of four critics. people are enjoying themselves. Is how you go. Yeah, at. but it's just like you can't look past numbers this steep. Now, if like the first Rotten Tomato reviews from the critics came out as like like a 59 or like a 61, you know, you know, just kind of barely rotten. It's like, okay, you know, there's something here. I could, I could, you know, I could kind of maybe give it the benefit of the doubt and wait to go see it. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, how do you improve past a 23%? That is rough. Yeah. It's, 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 it's fairly low. And, and just kind of looking at, you know, pulling up again, um, what's in theaters right now. Uh, you know, a Wonk is is competing against what Wonka this weekend, which uh, opened at around an eighty four percent for that. Um, I believe uh, was it Migration? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, was that uh, the Boy and the Heron? What's that studio that makes that? That's out. Uh, uh Miyazaki's yep. latest film. Yep, the that's out. Uh, you know, say ninety six percent. Godzilla minus one got an expanded opening in the U.S. this yeah, weekend. Yeah, that's with- that's killing it uh with uh with the ratings 98 percent everywhere so. that movie has been recommended to me by every single person i run into the lowest two rated movies i'm seeing here uh mike um that that are sitting here are wish at 48 percent and uh napoleon at 58 percent so, yeah and you can just watch napoleon on apple tv you don't even have to go to the theaters right to yeah. watch that one uh i don't I, I don't think it's out officially yet but it might be close to that and then um, Animal, but I don't, I don't think that's an American movie. Yeah, like I, I was telling Chris at the top of the show, I was like, uh, but on uh, on another hand, why do I want to watch Rebel Moon more than mm. I want to watch Aquaman 2? Yes. I know Aquaman 2 is just factually going to be a better film in every way. Right. Uh, Zack Snyder is, if nothing, consistent. Uh, he always disappoints me in the exact same way, so I know exactly what I'm looking out for. But like you told me, Chris, it, it, but how big is the train wreck going yeah. to be? That piques my curiosity. You, 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 you don't, know? yeah. A train wrecks, like you know, Aquaman will be serviceable. You know, I, I feel there's enough good people involved that it's not going to be like a, a complete shit show at the end of the day, right? It's just going to be a mm-hmm. middling film that everyone you know did their best on to get done. But like at the end of the day, this is the last DCE movie is going out with a whimper, not a bang. Yeah, a little. Mm-hmm. Again, because I was using water puns earlier, like a little splash rather than the tsunami. So, fine. That's perfectly fine. But Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder can't even secure a normal theatrical studio right now, right? Like, no no the, the like big company said, hey, make a movie for us and we'll put you in theaters. Netflix said, go ahead, make a movie. And not only did he make a movie, he is making a director's cut, despite the fact there are no producers over him, oh, over this movie. Oh, my God. 
So God. my my understanding, and I I will tell you, I will say this is my understanding that Netflix says you had to make he had to make a PG thirteen movie, so his cut is a PG thirteen cut. The director's cut will be unrated. I say, why even care about the PG thirteen because you're a streaming service? Like you you, <laughs> you obviously on on Netflix show other adult rated content. There is no need for you to 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 get a PG thirteen rating here it's so weird it makes me wonder um when these reviews were were trickling out uh the conversations bubbling back up again about snyder on netflix uh it made me think back remember all of those grandiose ideas that were supposed to come out of army of the dead right Mm -hmm. there's going to be these anime spinoffs this whole expanded universe and i haven't heard anything and i didn't watch it we were supposed to get the origin of those robot zombies with the blue eyes that you see in the background of the casino for like two seconds and don't worry that'll get explained and it's just like it feels like somebody at netflix really like really liked Zack snyder loved all the social engagement energy that this director had said let's put this chunk of budget on him but now the winds of streaming are changing netflix has already said that they're they're not going to be going this big anymore i got to imagine after rebel well, moon part two unless things totally change i i think snyder's probably gonna I, be done in Netflix. I, I also don't think he, they, he can say he has all these things done and they probably greenlit it but like i think he has maybe per product adhd if you will like he was very 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 quick to jump from army of the dead to his own stuff right rebel moon like very quickly he doesn't even talk about army of the dead anymore so why would why would we want to talk about it so they were probably like well if you don't talk about it we're just not gonna make it yet like we'll just wait for you to to catch up with it because rebel moon now has like there's two movies and an animated anime thing and like a video game supposedly but uh you know i'm not here to 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 rag on on zack snyder for making movies he's making movies and getting paid fucking awesome i wish i was making movies and getting paid mike no matter how good <laughs> or bad the critics thought they were uh but um, I sent you a picture of like beating the. It feels like we're we're, we're beating a dead horse over and over again when some, one of his stuff comes out because people are going to talk like, oh my god, the Snyder fans are going to love it, but the audience at large, what will they think when they watch this yeah. movie? My prediction here is, you know, everyone is expecting some sort of gigantic chasm between the critics and the audience, and it's going to spin up all of these new headlines of like our critics out of touch or whatever. Uh, I don't think the same size of Zack Snyder army is there anymore. I think they've dwindled. Mm-hmm. I think they'll still be loud. They'll still be vocal, but there ain't going to be no banners flown they, at Comic-Con anymore for him. You they, know, when they release the Snyder cut of rebel moon and it's just as bad, like they can't say <laughs> kind of thing at the end of the day. Uh, and but I'm, it's gonna it, it's gonna be uh, nine by sixteen. You can watch it all vertically on your phone. Well, it's gonna be gonna be great. That's great because I th- I thought I was gonna have to whip out my old tube TV to watch the four by three ratio of this movie <laughs> again on black and white. But I'm just kind of looking at the you know the the review titles. I always pull up top critics. I don't pull all critics. Um, I, I pull up the top critics. Um, it says you know another Zack Snyder movie that deals with the same old issues, quality production values with scatterbrained, incoherent storytelling. I feel like a broken record. That's how I feel. <laughs> like, like, exactly. Like, if I couldn't put it into a better, better thing, um, you know, uh, some people, you know, uh, I would like to see. What I would like to see is, uh, really, if I could wait, I probably can't wait, Mike, because I want to watch this. Is see both of these movies together, the part one and part two, because part two comes out in just a couple months, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like a year, a couple years out. Uh, I would love to see these together and see if it makes a better you know, watching experience. Yeah. If you there, will. there was one kind of like you were saying, top critic review that I read that said, I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. The second part is not out yet. This part one is not a complete movie. It sounds like this is one of those sins of films that like, th- this is not a, this is not a full narrative. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know some people have that criticism of spider verse part two, uh, but it, it does have a full arc for Gwen in that movie for sure. But it sounds like that is entirely missing in this first part of rebel moon. Mm-hmm. and maybe everything comes full circle in part two i but i highly i highly doubt it yeah the the one thing i i get i see in everything is that his his tendency for slow motion shots just drag on the pacing um mm-hmm. so boy am i not looking forward to all this slow motion i'm about to indulge myself <laughs> in in a week uh but but it'll be there it'll be you know same old 
Same old Snyder, just different movie. Um, I think someone said they were trying to, like, maybe it was him in some interviews. He's not doing as many interviews as I thought he would, if I'm going to be completely honest for this. So that's interesting. But talking about um, a uh, director's cut of uh, Sucker Punch, or like an unrated cut of Sucker Punch, I'm like, I liked Sucker Punch when I watched it, but I didn't know what I was watching back then. That (laughs) that narrative is so not is so not going to be accepted in, in 2024 or whatever. It's he not the narrative. He it. wants to do more slow motion. I'm pretty sure he just wants oh to God. add more act. Like that movie is a, it was a video game at best, right? Like it looks like watching a video game. He just wants to do more slow motion action scenes. We got to get Bjork's uh, army of one song back in the, back in the, <laughs> the play of uh, the radio. So how do we do that? We did, we put out another sucker punch. I, again, I would love to, Again, watch it all together, but I, I fear I'm just going to be shaking my head and be like, oh, I told you so the whole time I'm watching this next week. How do you feel? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the other thing is if anyone wants to come us to come back with a review, let us know. We'll come back. You know, we are not here next week, but we'll be back the week after. We can probably maybe, come back with a review. Maybe we do a double header spoiler cast, put uh, Rebel Moon and Aquaman in one kind of omnibus uh, uh, end of the year spectacular. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can take a look at it because we're, we're ending on. 2024 with a uh, whimper rather than a bang, if you will. So I feel like ending 2023 with uh, yeah. with Aquaman and Rebel Moon is like the perfect uh, culmination of everything that's happened in this year. Yeah. So yep, but we'll we'll do that. But yeah, if you guys have any thoughts on Rebel Moon when you watch it uh, next week, again it's on Netflix next week. You don't have to go to the theaters to watch it. We'll be all there. Uh, the first version, or you can wait for the director's cut whenever that's coming out. God. Uh, let us know. We'll be more than happy to to entertain your thoughts. But, Mike, that is the show for this week. Uh, it is not the last show for the year, but it is the last one for the next two weeks. Uh, but if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where they can find you at, my friend. Yeah, they can read my webcomic, liferewardsrisk.com, and just keep being awesome. That's what you can do. Chris, mm-hmm. if people want to find you, where can they find you? Find me on uh Instagram, Valdan87, V-A-L-D-A-N, or video games of the same name. Send me your Christmas uh, dishes. I want to know what you're eating until the holidays. You know, Thanksgiving and Christmas are very similar dishes. If you have something different you do for one than the other, I got to know. I want to know what you're eating (laughs) because I'm very food motivated for that. Uh, But if people want to know about the show, where they can tune in uh, for our end-of-the-year recap and some of these extra reviews in a couple weeks, where can they get that at, Mike? Well, apparently, all you all you all you have to do is go watch YouTube Shorts because yeah, that's, that's the only place that people are uh, in in my family uh, watching <laughs> me. But uh, head on over to superheroslate dot com. That is the the best place to find everything we do here at the show. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you'd love to listen to find podcasts. We got merch at superheroslate dot com slash store. We love hearing from you. Like Chris said, uh, uh, it's going to be a, uh, I'm calling it. It's going to be a Rebel Moon spectacular. We're going to have a great time, uh, no matter which way the needle drops on oh Rebel Moon. Uh, so come back in uh, in in two weeks. Uh, and if you want to be a super fan of this show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we'll see you guys in fourteen days. <laughs> wow, wow, that's like a fortnight. Oh, did someone say oh Fortnite? No, I'm gosh. kidding. All right, we'll catch you guys then.